Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday morning, December 28th. It looks like a milder weather pattern is setting up for much of the eastern part of the nation as we close out the month of December and move into the beginning of January 2023. In fact, it looks like a mild pattern right into at least the middle part of next week. Meanwhile, the western part of the U.S. gets pounded by storm after storm. Tremendous rainfall amounts over the next uh, 10 days to two weeks or so in the low-lying areas of California along the coastal sections and some unbelievable snowfall totals in those higher elevations of eastern California, the Sierra Nevada, several feet of snow over the next couple of weeks. Again, storm after storm, a very active weather pattern. As we close out the month of December here and uh, we'll move closer and closer to the new year, I wanted to take a look ahead at what uh, we may have for the nation in the month of January. Let's take a look at some teleconnection indices. And yesterday we looked at a stratospheric warming event that will evolve over the next 10 days to two weeks or so. And we'll touch upon that as well. First of all, this time of the year when the North Atlantic Oscillation and its closely related cousin, the Arctic Oscillation, are in negative territory for a sustained period of time, that is generally correlated with a favorable weather pattern to uh, allow for the transportation of cold Arctic air masses from Canada into the central and eastern U.S. Well, the NEO is right now in positive territory. However, it certainly looks like it'll head at least back to the neutral zone uh, over the next couple of weeks, and perhaps after that, back down into negative territory. So let's take a look at the NAO right now. The black here represents recent observations and right here you see we are in positive territory. This is a neutral line right here cutting across here. So we are in positive territory. However, the trend over the next couple of weeks is a negative trend back down to near the neutral zone by the time we get to the middle part of January. Meanwhile, the Arctic Oscillation is right now, right here, right around the neutral zone, but it too has a kind of a negative trend over the next couple of weeks, falling into negative territory by the time we get to the middle part of the month of January. So both of these are either neutral or in positive territory right now, and again, we have a milder weather pattern for at least the next week or so in the eastern U.S., but they're both showing signs of uh, going uh, more and more negative, perhaps to neutral or negative territory over the next couple of weeks. That is kind of a positive, uh, a more favorable sign for the return of cold air masses into the central and eastern U.S. as we get into, let's say, the second week of January and beyond. Well, another thing I like to monitor this time of the year is what's going on at the stratosphere. This is the highest level of the atmosphere. We're looking at temperature analysis here at the 10 millibar level. And this is a kind of a top-down view, the North Pole being right in this circular area right here. The U.S. is hard to see on this particular map, but is right here. The other side of the North Pole, the Siberian side, is right here. Right now, we have a rather typical polar vortex the upper part of the atmosphere, the cold polar vortex situated right on top of the pole. Again, rather typical this time of the year. Now, take a look 10 days out. This is the change in the pattern. Just 10 days from now, we're into the month of January. That polar vortex kind of shifts a little bit and becomes more stretched with a lobe of that polar vortex kind of over the U.S. Again, this is 10 days out and certainly a, a little bit of an area here of significant warming at the stratospheric level 10 days out. So again, quite a big change in the upper part of the atmosphere here between today and 10 days from now. Anytime that polar vortex gets displaced from the North Pole or weakens or breaks apart, that allows for, that is a more favorable scenario for high latitude cold air masses to make their way into the middle latitudes. Doesn't necessarily guarantee that cold air will be transported from the high latitudes to the eastern U.S., could end up in the central U.S. or the western U.S., but it does usually result in a displacement of the uh, usual cold air masses right on top of the pole this time of the year into the middle latitudes. So again, this combined with what 
the trend is on the NAO and the AO suggests that after a week or so of a milder weather pattern in the eastern U.S., there certainly is the chance of a return back to a colder weather pattern. Let's say by the time we get to the uh, second week of January and certainly by the third week of January. So we'll continue to monitor over the next several days the teleconnection indices and what's going on at the stratospheric level. Well, let's now take a look at the ensemble run of the Canadian model last night. This is the Zero Z ensemble version of the Canadian model. Uh, we're looking at 500 millibar height anomalies going forward and we'll see uh, kind of this overall pattern as it evolves over the next week to 10 days or so. Again, a very stormy time period for California, the rest of the western U.S. going uh, through the next 10 to 14 days or so, but a milder pattern shaping up for much of the eastern half of the nation. This is how it looks right here at the beginning of the day on Wednesday, December 28th. Let's keep moving forward here. And this ridging over the northeastern U.S. really intensifies uh, as we get into the latter part of the work week here. And the temperatures can climb to the 50s on Thursday, much of the Mid-Atlantic's I-95 car region, and then a flirt with the 60-degree mark by the time we get to the latter part of the upcoming weekend. Meanwhile, the upper-level low number one here across the western part of the U.S. Let's keep moving forward here. And that ridge continues to show up as a quite a strong area. This is now... Friday afternoon forecast map looking upstream multiple storm systems multiple upper level lows headed towards the west coast of the US and here we go now into the upcoming weekend this particular time a lot of moisture will flow out of the Gulf of Mexico into the mid-Atlantic northeast US causing rain showers on Saturday New Year's Eve a mild pattern though with this ridge situated over the uh, really focused over the Canadian maritime provinces here's another upper level trough headed towards the west coast of California and the western part of the U.S. We go now through the upcoming weekend and here we are on uh, New Year's Day. This is the latter part of Sunday <coughs> afternoon, January 1st, 2023. That upper level low slides right through California into the interior west. Again, it could result in a lot of snowfall, not only over the Sierra Nevada mountains in eastern California, but also throughout the Rocky Mountain states here. Expect a lot of snowfall in this kind of a pattern. Meanwhile, a lot of ridging at the end of the upcoming week and across the eastern U.S. into the eastern part of Canada. And look at this storm system over the Aleutian Islands as we go into the early part of next week. Now, we're now into the early part of next week and a continuation of strong ridging over the uh, southeastern part of Canada. Upper level low here, I don't know if this is number two or number three, another one upstream here headed towards California. Just a very stormy time period for the western U.S., especially California. Again, low-lying areas will get tremendous amounts of rain, maybe some mudslides. Upper uh, air elevation areas, the higher elevation areas of the uh, Sierra Nevada, several feet of snow without question over the next couple of weeks. Now, let's move beyond... The middle part of next week, and here we go now into the middle part of next week. This is a week from right now. If you like cold weather in the east or if you're a snow lover, what you want to see is this ridge situated over the Canadian Maritime by the middle of next week kind of retrograde back towards the Hudson Bay region of Canada. And you also want to see some of this activity, some of these upper level lows taking a more of a southern track. So again, uh, if you're interested in snow in the eastern U.S., you want to kind of see this moving in this direction and these moving farther and farther to the south in this fashion here. That will allow some more cold air to move into the mid-Atlantic region along with a lot of moisture off uh, to the south here. And that could make things look kind of interesting. So let's go into the latter part of next week. Uh, here we are now Thursday. A week from tomorrow, January 5th, and look at this starting to show up here now by the latter part of next week. Some of this ridging is, is indeed starting to build back west over the central part of Canada, the Hudson Bay region of Canada. Meanwhile, upper level troughing is starting to show up down, way down in the uh, southern states here. Now, uh, we're going to the latter part of next week. Again, this is using the ensemble run of the Canadian model from 0 to Z last night. This is now 
about 10 days out or so, Saturday, January 7th. And look at this, the ridge starting to weaken here over the Canadian Maritime and build right in this region right here. Meanwhile, you're starting to see some troughiness sliding across the southern states. And then by the time we get into, let's say, the latter part of the uh, next week in January 7th, January 8th, we're starting to see uh, uh, troughiness starting to show up here uh, Monday, January 9th now, right here in the eastern U.S. Again, at the same time, you're seeing ridging, kind of building back here. So, indeed, you have this kind of a pattern starting to develop here with the upper level troughs sliding, taking that southern route and starting to intensify in the eastern U.S. Meanwhile, the, the, the ridge that was concentrated over the Canadian Maritime starting to retrograde back. And that kind of a combination makes things look a little bit interesting by the time we get to, let's say, the uh, uh, January 9th, January 10th time frame. We'll go out a little bit farther in time. And indeed, this is a time period I think we'll have to watch out for uh, for a deeper trough showing up here in the eastern U.S. Meanwhile, kind of a retrograding high-pressure ridging over the central part of Canada. So, yeah, it's, it looks quite mild in the eastern third of the nation for the next week to 10 days or so. But beyond that, there certainly are some signals that things could get quite interesting again, uh, let's say by January 9th or 10th or so, meaning more colder air masses can make their way into the central and eastern U.S. at the same time, it still remains quite a stormy overall weather pattern. Well, and now let's take a quick look at the surface forecast maps of the Canadian model run from Zero Z last night. And we talked about this yesterday. Whenever you see an isobar pattern like this on the backside of a high, winds again flow clockwise around highs in this fashion here. This is just a broad scale warming event this time of the year with. Uh, milder air coming from the south central states all the way into the Mississippi Valley region and uh, the uh, upper Ohio Valley and eventually works its way into the eastern uh, seaboard area. Here we are on Thursday, high pressure now kind of shifting to the east to the mid-Atlantic region and some of it off the sea, eastern seaboard by the time we get into late Thursday. That opens the door for this milder air to move from west to east, first across the Mississippi Valley, then the Ohio Valley, and uh, finally into the east. And again, some areas may uh, you know, reach 60 degrees by the time we get to Sunday in the Mid-Atlantic region, specifically the I-95 corridor, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, flirting with the 60-degree mark by Sunday, New Year's Day. But we do have a lot of moisture before we get to that point on Saturday, moving into the Mid-Atlantic region. Meanwhile, take a look out here in California. This is over the upcoming weekend. Tremendous around, amount of precipitation in those higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada, and that will be in the form of snow. Several feet of snow, uh, uh, not only from this particular storm, but several storms after going ahead for the next 10 days to two weeks or so. Let's keep moving forward here. Very mild weather for the Mid-Atlantic region on Sunday, New Year's Day. Maybe some sunshine, 60 degrees a possibility. And that uh, storm system that pounds California early in the week and then shifts to the inter part of the western U.S., the Rocky Mountain states. And again, these higher elevations could get some significant snowfall in this kind of a pattern. Then we move forward. Let's move rather quickly here into the early part of next week talked about this yesterday. This could very well be kind of a severe weather outbreak here. We'll have to watch for this. A lot of warm, moist air flowing northward from the Gulf of Mexico into the Tennessee Valley, into the Mississippi Valley. This is a week from yesterday. Next Tuesday we're looking at, and this could very well be uh, kind of a severe weather outbreak, the first perhaps of the year 2023. Meanwhile, another storm system pounds away at California by the middle part of next week with heavy snow inland and heavy rain along coastal sections. And we'll keep moving forward here. That uh, storm system that could cause some severe weather, let's say next Tuesday in the Mississippi Valley, makes its way to the eastern U.S. by the time we get to the middle part of next week. Again, this is when the overall pattern starts to show up a little bit colder now. Uh, by the latter part of next week, we're looking at next Friday now and more cold air 
with the change in the NAO and the AO and that stratospheric warming event, again, uh, allow for the possibility of colder air masses making their way back into the central and eastern U.S. at the end of next week and certainly going into the following week. Meanwhile, the West Coast continues to get pounded away here by uh, storm system after storm system over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's just wrap up quickly with a couple of forecast maps from the Canadian model run of Zero Z. Here we're looking at total precipitation amounts over the next 10 days, 240 hour forecast. This includes snow. It's all total precipitation amounts, so it can be rain or snow. Just take a look at here, California, as an example of what's coming over the next week to 10 days or so. Just tremendous rainfall amounts. The scale is over here. Anything yellow is a foot or more of liquid equivalent precipitable water in the form of snow over the Sierra Nevada, in the form of heavy rain, potential mudslides in the works across Northern California over the next week to 10 days or so. Again, this is the cumulative forecast map for 10 days from now. A lot of precipitation in the Gulf of Mexico. This is a system late this week into the early part of the weekend and then we talked about the potential severe weather outbreak around next Tuesday. That too produces a lot of precipitation in the Tennessee Valley and the lower and middle part of the Mississippi Valley. Again, this is a forecast map for the next 10 days. Well, let's wrap up with this extended video discussion with a look at the snowfall totals. Now this is the total snowfall amount over the next 10 days as depicted by again the zero z run of the canadian model and just wanted to point out first of all nothing in the i-95 Carter region here uh, uh, over the next 10 days again we're looking at the possible change back to a colder weather pattern in about 10 days the latter part of next week let's say thursday friday of next week going into the following week but for the next seven to ten days or so uh, very unlikely to get some accumulating snow in the I-95 Carter region of the Mid-Atlantic, but quite a bit of snowfall over the northern plains. And take a look here. I just wanted to point this out. This is showing up as white in the Sierra Nevada. White on this particular map is just off the scales. This is 48 inches, kind of an off-white here on this legend here, and this is just pure white higher than 50 inches, 50 plus inches, let's say, over the next 10 days or so in the Sierra Nevada. Tremendous rain, uh, snowfall amounts, also extreme northern California mountains, but unbelievable storm, stormy patterns setting up here for California over the next couple of weeks, and that will include tremendous snowfall amounts in those higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada. And all the Rocky Mountain states will get some significant snowfall as well in those higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains. So an active weather pattern as we go into the new year. It looks mild for the eastern third of the nation going into the new year, but there certainly are some signals of a potential change back to a colder weather pattern. The end of next week going into the uh, the uh, following, following week, the second full week in the month of January for the eastern U.S., We'll continue to track teleconnection indices going forward and what's happening at the stratospheric level in terms of the temperature pattern. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.